The Israelites are leaving Egypt. The people are running like mad, God's shouting directions in their ears like a crazed backseat driver. You'd think they'd go directly to Israel, but instead, God takes them on the scenic route to avoid the Egyptians. Soon, they hit a dead end. The Israelites run into the Red Sea, and the Egyptians catch up with them there. God decides to show everyone who's boss. Extend your hand over the sea, God tells Moses. You will split the sea, and the Israelites will cross on dry land. Extend your hand again, and the waters will crash down on the Egyptians as they follow you. The Egyptians drown, and the Israelites on the far shore celebrate their freedom, singing and dancing and praising God. But it doesn't take long for them to become disgruntled. They come to a place named Merah where the water tastes bitter, and they complain about it. God tells Moses to cast a piece of wood into the water. Moses does, and the water becomes sweet, and the people drink it. Next, they complain about their lack of food. Moses tells them, God will provide manna every morning. I don't know what manna is, but I can tell you it will be nourishing. And I can also tell you that you should only take what you'll eat that day, no more. Of course, some people can't resist sneaking a bit more. In the morning, they discover the leftovers are rancid and wormy. The Sabbath is the only day this changes. On the sixth day of the week, everyone's supposed to gather manna for two days because there won't be any on the next day. So that night, the leftovers don't go bad. But some people still expect fresh manna the next morning. They go out looking for it. There isn't any. We already knew that was going to happen. So Moses starts to get annoyed because the people never believe that things will just work out the way he says. And the next time that the Israelites complain, he complains to God. What should I do with these people? But of course, God provides. At every step of the way, God gives the Israelites what they need. And at every step of the way, the Israelites find something new to complain about. Some of it's understandable. Slavery sucks, and so does not having food to eat or water to drink. But after a while, our ancestors in the wilderness are getting a little annoying. Why do they complain so much? And why does the Torah feel the need to let us know about each individual complaint? One possibility is that God makes them doubt. Back in Egypt, God hardened Pharaoh's heart and made him come after the Israelites so that everyone could see a full-on demonstration of God's power. Is God hardening the hearts of the Israelites here, just so that they'll know how generous God is? The people doubt and doubt. It is kind of annoying and repetitive. But if you pay attention, they never actually doubt God twice about the same thing. Once it's defeating the Egyptian overlords. Another time it's providing water. Another time it's good tasting water. Another time it's food. So doubting keeps us protected. We just have to be open-minded to give a chance for our doubt to be proven wrong.